Hi guys, so today's video, a bit different to what I normally do. It's not actually a tutorial, but a lot of people say, oh, Space Invader, you always seem to know what to do. Everything goes really smooth for you. Well, actually, that's not always the case. I make mistakes like everyone. And recently, I made a little bit of a mistake. I took a risk that I shouldn't really have taken and ended up losing my app data. Now, that's not the end of the world. So I thought I'd show you exactly what happened and take you along for the ride while I try and fix it. Now, I didn't plan on making this video, of course. You know, who wants things to go wrong? But yesterday, I was messing around with the server quite a lot, and come the evening time, Vanessa shouted across to me saying, Hey, Ed, MB's not working. I thought, oh man, what's wrong with it now? And I had a look at it, and I saw that there was some unrecognized file systems on the server. And so, I wasn't going to fix it last night, so I've got up early. I've got my first cup of coffee here in one of my favorite mugs. It's in my Rambo mug, so let's crack on and have a look at what's going on. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is obviously log into the Unraid server. Now, what you saw there was my Bitwarden, which is a self-hosted password manager. You'll see that the Unraid array has stopped here. So you may be wondering, well, how's my Bitwarden actually working? Well, if you are, that's a good question. And it's working because the actual Bitwarden Docker container doesn't need to be running to actually access the passwords. They're actually synced across to your desktop, encrypted of course. And if the Docker container's not running, then obviously I can't add new passwords. But I don't lose being able to access my passwords just because the server's down. So if you haven't got Bitwarden installed, I've done a video about it before. An awesome program, I'd highly recommend it. Now, the reason the array stopped is because obviously my app data wasn't working, which was stored on this pool here, which consisted of um, three one terabyte SSDs. So basically my app data pool here, it has an unrecognizable file system, as does this pool at the top here, but the pool at the top there, a different problem, which I'm going to show you in a moment as well. So anyway, let's start up the array and I can show you all of the kind of problems I've got a bit easier with the array started. Okay, you can see my pool here, the one called Viper. It has an unmountable or unsupported file system. This is where I store all of my app data. So without that working, obviously none of my containers can run properly. And you can see another single disk pool at the top here called Baystar. That's also got an unmountable file system as well. Now this pool, it's not a problem, it's slightly different. Now I formatted this drive as um, ZFS encrypted. I've been using the test versions of Unraid for 6.12 for a while. And a few versions ago, I formatted this disk as ZFS encrypted. It worked absolutely fine, but now I'm using the RC version. It seems that the RC version, for some reason, isn't actually mounting ZFS encrypted disks. A really small bug that I'm sure will be kind of fixed in the next release. And I can actually mount this drive manually by just typing um, zpool import and then the name of the pool base star and it imports fine. So I'm not worried about that at all. Plus there's no data on there anyway. I just wanted to format it as an encrypted disk to put some data on later on. However, the app data pool here, Viper, that's a totally different matter. This is actually a ZFS RAID 0 pool, so obviously it's quite risky running a pool like this because if any drive fails, you lose everything because the data for me here is striped across three one terabyte disks. So I took a bit of a risk with this, so it's kind of my own fault. And what happened yesterday is I was moving the server, moved it forward, and I wanted to plug a USB in the back, and I accidentally knocked the power cable and the whole thing went off. I rebooted it, thought everything was fine. It was only when Vanessa said MB's not working is I actually checked and I saw that the pool was totally unmountable. Now what I should have done really is the same as what I did for my VM's pool here, this um, pool called X-Wing. This pool here is actually a RAID Z pool, so it's got one disk of redundancy. That would have been a much smarter thing to do, but because the disks were only one terabyte in the Viper pool, I kind of didn't really want to lose any space. But thinking about it now, I didn't even need three terabytes worth of space for app data, so it was a pretty stupid thing to do. Anyway, I'm opening up a command prompt here and typing zpool status, which will tell me the status of all the zpools in the server. So as expected, I can only see the X-Wing pool here, that RAID zpool. 
but at least it says there's no known data errors, so that's good. So what I'm going to try now is I'm going to try and manually import the Viper pool by just typing Z pool space import then the name of the pool Viper and let's see what happens. Okay, cannot import Viper says there's an IO error and to destroy and recreate the pool from a backup source. Not the best message that I was hoping for, but there's a couple of things that we can try. So I'm going to try typing Z pool clear and then space Viper. See if I can clear the pool. No, that's not going to work can't open the pool doesn't think the pool's there that makes sense mm, if it didn't come up run around z pool status well then that command's not going to actually work mm, yeah so it's not really looking very good for this um, z pool what i'm going to do is i'm going to use a zfs debugging tool called zbd that allows us to kind of like look inside the pool and check various things we can check the metadata the kind of data blocks and we can use it to try and repair various things before doing that, I'm going to see if the zpool cache file exists. Oops, um, let me put that in again. Okay, yeah, it's there. So I'm going to delete that file and then I'm going to run the command. So I'm going to use the command zbd space hyphen c, which will show me hopefully the human readable format of the zpool. Uh, no, not for me, it doesn't. Um, no such file or directory. Now, thinking about it, I don't think I can actually use this tool unless the pool's actually imported. I'll run it again and just see. No, it's definitely not going to work. I'll try just using the E flag to see if I can export the metadata. I doubt it's going to work again, but I'm going to give it a go anyway. Oh, well, it's actually doing something. I didn't expect it to work. I expected it to say the same as before. Maybe some of the metadata is cached. I don't know. Um, obviously, normally you'd output this to a file. Oh, it's actually aborted anyway. Um, one more thing I can try, I guess, and I probably should have tried this first, is to use the zpool import, but with the um, flag to like force it to import. Oh, not if, it should be hyphen f and the name of the pool. Okay, no, cannot import Viper. One or more devices is currently unavailable. Well, the disks are all there. The smart data is good on them, so basically just the data is corrupt on one of them. And because it's three drives with the data striped across it, no redundancy, I've pretty much lost that pool. Well, I guess just to be 100% sure the drives are there, I'm going to look on the disk controller by going here into the system devices and then scrolling down to look at the disk controller to see if I can see the drives attached. So yeah, they're here, the three SanDisk 1TB drives here, so the disks are definitely attached to the server. And actually my 8TB drive is there, the one that had the encrypted zpool on it, that's on this controller as well. That's not why it's not working, so you know, I 100% know that, I'll try and mount that drive in a moment, I'll import it manually, just to show you that's working. So let's open a command prompt. Um, I'm going to have a look actually if there's a backup of the ZFS configuration. Um, not that we can actually really use it. No, it's not there anyway. Anyway, let's actually import the um, base star zpool, the one that's um, an encrypted ZFS drive. Well, I think actually the drive is encrypted by Luke's and then the ZFS on top of that. This is different than if you had an encrypted data set, how it works. We can see here anyway, it's unmountable at the moment, but for some reason when I manually do it, it works. So let's bring back up the command prompt and type zpool import and base star. I know, I know, it's a cool name for a zpool. You're welcome to use it. <laughs> oh dear, I'm funny, aren't I? Anyway, we can see it's imported, so that worked. However, even though I've manually mounted it, going back to the main tab and refreshing the page, it looks like it kind of isn't here on the actual pool, but it is. Um, scrolling down to the bottom again, we can see, you know, it wants to format these drives. Maybe if I'd mounted it before actually starting the array, it would have um, it would have mounted properly. I don't know. But if I bring back up the command prompt and type in zpool status, then we're going to see that the actual pool is there. Yep, there it is. Look, um, base star at the top it says it's online. No known errors. So all good. And another command zpool list. Pretty much the same thing. Just shows us the pools that are in the server. Again, base star and X-Wing. X-Wing was mounted by the Unraid server, base star wasn't. Now if I type zpool list, I can look inside them and see all the data sets. So we can see base star has got data sets there. So has X-Wing, so everything's actually working. 
but for some reason Unraid didn't mount Baystar when it booted and it seems that I can't actually make it appear as a pool in Unraid even though I mount it manually afterwards. But like I said earlier, I'm not really bothered about it. I don't actually really have any data in those data sets anyway. I'm going to stop the array now and I'm actually going to kind of remove and get rid of Viper. And I guess I should probably actually remove Base Star as a pool, but not actually delete the data. Then I can manually use it if I want to. So anyway, now I've actually unassigned the disk, I can delete the pool. And deleting the pool won't delete the data, so I don't need to worry about that. But for that SSD pool Viper, I need to delete all the data. So I just go into it, click onto Arrays, then type the name of the pool and click Proceed. So now like the other one, I can just remove the disks out of the pool, just set them all as unassigned. Then just go back into the pool configuration and then because there's no disks, I can click on to delete pool. And scrolling down here, we can see that the disks are all ready to format, so they've been cleared. So now I can create another pool. I'm going to create Viper again, add the disks back, but this time I'm not going to do RAID 0. I think I'll do another RAID Z1. That way I've got two terabytes and I've still got some redundancy. Now, thinking about it, I probably didn't actually need to delete the pool and then recreate it. I probably could have just erased it and then literally changed the configuration. But for the sake of just an extra couple of minutes, I thought it wasn't worth just risking not doing it. Now, if I wanted to be really super safe, I could have set this here to mirror. And then it would mirror the data across three drives, so I'd be super safe. But one disk's worth of parity with RAID Z, that will do for me. I don't need to be really super safe with this data. Um, auto trims on I'm not going to have compression okay looks good so I'm going to click on to apply and done so now I'm going to scroll down and start up the array and now it's going to ask me to format the drives so I'm going to do that okay so that'll take a little while to format now whilst it's formatting I've got a little confession to make um, I don't have the app data um, backup plugin installed I'd um, created a new USB stick a while ago it hadn't got around to putting it back on um, I know I tell everyone else to kind of always back up their app data and that kind of thing, but I haven't done that recently. But luckily I do have a backup of it um, probably from about a month ago um, in a share. So I'm going to have a look for that and then copy that across onto the formatted um, CFS pool. Now there's something I forgot to do earlier and you'll see why it's important in a moment. Now I should have stopped the Docker service earlier. Um, I didn't, so I'm going to stop it now. But because I didn't, that will cause a little problem with the app data, which I'm going to show you next. OK, good. That stopped. So now I'm going to go back to shares. OK, before I do any copying, there's something I've got to address with this um, app data share. Now, the app data share, as you can see here, it used to be set to prefer the cache pool Viper. But when I started the array a moment ago, the actual cache pool Viper, it wasn't actually available. Nothing was formatted, but the Docker service was started up. So what it's done is it's created from the running containers, these what I'll call ghost files really, because they weren't actually created on any disks, but because the um, location forward slash MNT forward slash user app data wasn't pointing to any disks, then it's kind of, I guess it's written in RAM, I don't know, but I want to get rid of it. So what I'm going to have to do is open up a command prompt and delete forward slash mnt forward slash user forward slash app data and then I can actually put the data that I want back into the correct place right because I've deleted that now there will be no app data share so I'm going to go back and create that so you can see nothing there so I'm going to scroll down to the bottom click on to add share and recreate the app data folder and again I want it to prefer the viper cache okay so with that the app data shares back look now, I've got in here the CFS backup. Um, there's a backup of Viper. Um, there's the app data there. So in there, all of my app data is a bit old. It's about a month or so, but that doesn't matter. So I'm going to open up a command prompt and I'm going to copy the files with rsync. So I'm going to type rsync and then hyphen avh. That will keep all of the timestamps, everything like that. Then forward slash mnt, forward slash user, forward slash CFS hyphen backup then forward slash Viper, because that was the name of the folder, and then app data with a forward slash. Now the destination, obviously forward slash MNT, forward slash user, forward slash app data, again with a forward slash. 
Now, thinking about it, I'm not going to actually run it in a command prompt. So I'm just going to copy the command here, put it onto the clipboard, and I think I'm going to run it from a script instead. So I'm going to go to settings, user scripts, and I'm going to add a new script. So I'm just going to put a whole bunch of zeros and a one and then rsync. That should get it to the top of the actual list. OK, there it is. So now I'm going to edit the script and paste in that command. Click on to save changes. And now I'm going to run the script in the background. That's important. I don't want it to run in the foreground. If I click on logs here, there we are. Everything's copying across. So I can just wait now. OK, guys, so that's going to take a little while. Um, it's getting late in the morning here. Well, not late. It's quarter past ten, but I've been up since early and normally I take my little doggy out for a walk. So Shadow, you want to go for a walk? 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 Say hello to everyone. Tell them we'll be back. Come here. Come here. Come here. Okay, guys, see you in a moment. Okay now, so it's a few moments later and we're back. Well, it's a few moments for you, but a little bit longer for me. So hopefully that's given the rsync enough time to copy everything across. So let's have a look and check that that's gone through properly. Okay, so let's go back to that script. Okay, so the script's definitely finished. You know, it, if it wasn't, it would be saying running here. And when it's finished, we can see this little button here to show the log, etc. Now, when I run a script that's gonna run for a while, I always like to run it in the background because then you can just leave it running and if you close the window on your PC or something, it's not going to finish the script. Now, if you just ran it in a normal window, if my laptop went to sleep or something like that, the script would probably stop running. So any long scripts, always run them in the background. So we can see what the script did if we click on the log here. And we can see it moved 190 gigs, so that's about right. And if I go back to the main tab here, we can see the use space. 195 gigs, about the same. Now, if you're wondering why it says 195 gigs are used here, and in the script it said we'd only copied across 190, now don't forget that when you format a disk, it always says that a little bit of space is used, and in this case, it was probably about 4 or 5 gigs. That's why it says there's more space used than the files I've transferred across. Right, so now the files are transferred across, and the app data is in the right place, I can restart the Docker service. So with the Docker service started, I want to quickly go to the Docker tab because there's one container I want to shut down straight away. And that's my NZB get container. And the reason I'm doing this is because Sonar and Radar, well, the app date is a month old. So it's going to think that some of the files that it's already downloaded in the last month are not there. So it's going to try and download stuff. So I want to shut that down so that doesn't happen. And then I can open up things like MB, Sonar and Radar and get it to rescan all the files that are there. And then it will kind of make the app data for those all up to date and I should be good. So I'm going to start with MB because that will probably take the longest to scan both the TV shows and the movies. Well, it looks like it's actually automatically started to do that anyway here. But I'm going to go across to um, the library anyway. And I'm going to manually start, you know, um, this one here for movies. And I know TV shows is running anyway, but I'm going to trigger it again. Just to sort my OCD out and make sure it does it. These I don't think we have to do, no. So just basically TV shows and movies, I'll leave them to scan. Now I'm going to go and do the same to um, Sonar and Radar. So I'm going to open up Sonar here. OK, so we need to click on the update all button kind of in the top left there. You can see the icon spinning around now. That's going to check all of the folders of all of the existing shows that you had up until the date that I've kind of replaced the app data with. And we can see for this show here, it thinks from 6th of February to 13th of March are missing. They're not missing. And when it's finished scanning everything, all of those files will be seen and they'll be put back in. One thing this won't pick up is if any new shows have been added since the app data was um, backed up. So any new shows I've added, there wouldn't be an existing folder, so it won't scan it. For new series I may have added, I need to go to import library, sorry, library import. So then once here, we can actually import the shows that I've already got. So you just choose the folder, you know, it should be there already. So you just click onto that and then it will scan through everything, process all of the folders, then it should tell you anything that it's picked up here that wasn't in its database. And then we'd import that by clicking on the import series button. And we just click on to import and then the number of series. For me, it's just one. 
So that should be now sonars up to date as well. MB's already up to date. So I just do this for the other R's. Only radar's the other one I really use. So I'm going to do the same process as I did for sonar to radar. But I'm not going to bore you going through it. It's just the same really. Now another container I need to think about is Nextcloud. Because any files that have been uploaded to Nextcloud, the MariaDB database is going to be not correct. So I'm going to go down to Nextcloud here. You can see here I can log in OK. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to console here. Then change directory into this directory here and make the OCC file executable. And I'm going to paste this command in here, which basically will scan through all of the Nextcloud files and update the database. So after doing that, everything should be pretty much OK. Again, this will take a while. So I'm going to let that go through on its own. There's no point boring you watching that. But when it's finished, my next cloud hopefully should be all OK. And all my app data should be back pretty much how it was. Now, if there's anything you think I should have done in addition to what I've done, then please tell me in the comments of this video. I'd love to hear what it is and then I can go ahead and do it. So what have I learned from this? Probably nothing. No, in all seriousness, don't move your server unless it's switched off because you don't want the power plug to come out. Don't use a RAID 0 unless it's data that you really don't care about. You know, it wasn't too bad restoring the app data, but I definitely wouldn't do it again. And make sure you have backups. Now, in my defense, I was going to do a backup this week. I was going to write a script to do ZFS send to send it from basically that Z pool to another Z pool on another server or another Z pool on the same server. I just hadn't got around to it. Anyway, guys, I don't know if you like this sort of video a bit different this time. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, give it a like. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, then please subscribe. Plenty more videos coming. Anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap it up now. But whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good. And I'll catch you in the next video.